In this tutorial, we are going to talk about vectors, the introduction to vectors. Okay, so vectors is just basically a physical quantity which has got both magnitude and direction. So we want first to compare um, two things. We have a vector and a scalar. So we have what we call the vector quantity and the scalar quantity. So what is a vector quantity and what is a scalar quantity? Okay, so a vector quantity, like we have already said, a vector quantity is a physical quantity which has got both magnitude and direction. That's all. So that's basically a vector. Okay. What over a scalar? Scalar is just basically a physical quantity which has got only magnitude. Now, when we are talking about the magnitude, we are talking about the size. Okay, so a magnitude is, is just basically a size. Now, when, when we are talking about the vectors, we are saying that a vector is a physical quantity which has got both magnitude and direction. Meaning that a vector is supposed to have a size and direction. So, let's say a car is moving at 20 kilometers per hour south then we say a car is moving at 20 kilometers per hour just like this so the moment when you say a car is traveling at 20 kilometers per hour south meaning we are giving the direction to say this car is moving at a speed of 20 kilometers per hour the direction is toward the south so south is the direction 20 kilometers per hour it is the magnitude okay so if we can say here here we are saying that a car is moving is traveling at 20 kilometers per hour there is no direction definitely there is just only magnitude only size so that is a scalar okay so that is what we need to know the definition of scalar quantity and the um, the vector now we have got some examples of vectors so some examples of vector quantity we may talk of um, the force force is a vector quantity we may talk of the momentum momentum we may talk of the acceleration we may talk of the velocity we may talk of um, uh, we may talk of um, what else we have the force the momentum acceleration the velocity and what else okay the lot okay we may also talk of the the, dis the displacement okay then what are some of the examples of uh, scalar quantities we may talk of um, the distance we may talk of um, the mass. We may talk of the 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 time. We may talk of um, the speed. Yeah, there are a lot. Okay, so these are some of the examples um, of vectors and scalars. So the difference between scalars and vectors is that in vectors is uh, a physical quantity which has got both magnitude and direction while scalars the their physical quantities which they have, which only have got what the magnitude which is the size so that is the basic idea behind the scalars and vectors but our main focus in this lesson we are going to talk about vectors only okay so as you can see i've just uh, written the heading there to say the introduction of vectors and scalars so there we go okay so vectors since we are saying that a vector is a is a physical quantity which has got both magnitude and direction meaning that a vector can be a vector can be what can be added okay so let's say we have a vector let's say we have a vector a which is uh, uh, 20 newtons let's also have vector b which is 30 newtons let's find a plus b 
Now to find a plus b is just a matter of us adding these two vectors. Okay, so these two vectors, we are going to add them. We're going to get this and then we add the other one. Meaning that I'm just supposed to say this is going to be 20 plus 30, which is going to give us 50 newtons. So this is also what we call the resultant vector. So this is the same as the resultant. The resultant is the addition of all the vectors which you have. So the addition of A plus B. So now this type of vector is what we call the parallel vectors. So parallel vectors, whenever you have got a parallel vector, you just add them direct. So as you can see here, we have parallel vectors. You can add them direct. Now, since we are saying that a vector is a, it's a physical quantity has got both magnitude and direction. And a vector can be, can have negative. A vector can, can have negative, but a scalar cannot have negative. So we are saying that speed is, a, is, a, is an example of a scalar. Then velocity is an example of, um, velocity is an example of vectors. Okay. So velocity can be negative, but speed can't be negative. So whenever you see speed having negative, that is velocity. Okay, so now we are still talking about the parallel vectors. So let's say we have vector A. Vector A is 30 newtons. We have vector B. Vector B is moving in opposite direction. Now it is uh, 20 newtons. So to find A plus B, this is going to be 30. We follow the arrows because a vector has got both magnitude and direction. So direction is very, very important. Where is it going? Is it toward north, toward west, toward south, toward the east? Something like that. So this vector is going toward the east. Therefore, it's going toward uh, west, sorry. Therefore, that vector is supposed to be negative. Okay? Meaning that this vector is going to be negative. We can put plus and then you say it's going to be negative 20. Therefore, the resultant is going to be 10 newtons. That is the parallel vectors. Let's have different things. Let's say this vector B is um, 50. 50 newtons. So to find the resultant, the resultant is the addition of A plus B. This is going to give us 30 plus. This is going toward east, we know, toward west, since we know that if we've got our xy plane, this is negative x, this is positive x, this is a negative y, this is positive y. Okay, so this is going toward the positive x direction, so we have to take it negative. So it's going to be um, negative 50, and then we're going to get negative 20 newtons. What it means there is that when you add these two forces, the net force is going to be moving in this direction. What it means there, guys, is this. It's more like we have an object. Let's say we have we have two, two guys. So we have the surface. We have the object. Now, this object has got mass. You apply the force in this direction. This force is uh, 20 newtons. You apply another force in this direction. This force is 30 newtons. Okay, so we know that the force that is moving, the 30 is greater than is greater than 20. Therefore, this object is going to accelerate in, in this direction, toward west. Meaning that the net force is negative what? Because we are supposed to say that the summation of all the forces uh, is going to be the 20 minus, tw minus 30, which is going to give us negative 10. So the net acceleration is going to be in this direction. Then the net force is uh, negative uh, 30, mm, negative 20, mm, sorry, negative 10. Okay, so that is what we need to understand. Now, let's talk about perpendicular vectors. When we talk of perpendicular vectors, these two vectors, they are perpendicular to each other. So we have vector M, which is um, 20 newtons. Let's have vector B. So we have our vector B which is moving in this direction, it is just basically, um, let's, let's give it a 10 newtons. Now to find A plus B, which is going to be equal to the resultant, we need to add these two forces. So we are going to have vector A plus vector B. So our vector A is here, 
B is there. So to add these two, we need to get the line from the origin all the way to the last vector. Meaning that this is our A plus B, which is the resultant. So since we are making a 90, that's why we are saying it is a perpendicular, perpendicular vectors. How do we add perpendicular vectors? To add perpendicular vectors, what we have to do is, um, you get the vector, for example, this case is going to be A plus B, or you can just say the resultant. It's going, we are going to use Pythagoras theorem, where it's going to be the square root of... Um, a squared plus B squared. Okay. Supposed to say A is A squared plus B squared. A squared plus B squared. So our resultant is going to be our A is 20 plus our B is 10. So now what will be our answer? Okay, so you can find the answer there. 20 squared is supposed to be somewhere there, 400. And then we have, we have also what? What else do we have? We have um, 10 squared. 10 squared is just basically 100. So we can say 20 squared plus 10 squared. Then we get, I'm getting 500, we get the square root of this. A 500 square root of a 500. So I'm getting a 22.36. Okay, so my resultant 22.36 newtons. So that is it for perpendicular vectors. So whenever you see perpendicular vectors, but in most cases, you are going to see a question which is going to be neither perpendicular nor parallel. Now here is the issue. We go to the next step. The next step is um, uh, the vectors which are going to talk about neither perpendicular nor parallel. Now what we have to understand is that when we talk of neither perpendicular nor parallel, that vector will be will not be in x if this is my x y plane that vector is not going to be in in x direction or in y direction okay so this vector let's say that we have a vector which is um here is our vector let's say this is a okay by the way i didn't mention to say whenever we're talking about the vector a vector is represented by either a modulus or an alo on top. So if I have got vector A, I can say A, I put alo there, or I can put A, then I put the modulus. Okay. That is a vector. When you just leave it just like A, then it's not going to be a vector. It's going to be, um, it's going to be the scalar and not a vector. So here is our vector. Let's say we have vector A. This vector A is neither parallel nor perpendicular. As you can see there, it's just one vector. Now this vector is going to have the x component and the y component. Meaning that this vector is going to have ax and ay. Then it's going to form an angle here. So using Sokatoa, using Sokatoa we can see that we can start with sine. If we get the sine there, we are going to see that sine theta is going to be equal to the opposite is ay divided by the hypotenuse a so whenever i'm trying to resolve any vector into y component i'm supposed to get that vector i get sine the, the angle that is the first formula which you have to know and very very important next let's go to cos we have cos theta has to be equal to cos theta is the adjacent over hypotenuse so adjacent is ax hypotenuse is a to find ax is going to be equal to vector a cos theta this is the formula which we're going to be using to find the x component always now this is very very important now let's talk about uh the tan tan is going to help us to find the angle so if you have the ax and ay then we can find the angle so the angle is going to be tan theta is going to be equal to tan theta is the opposite divided by the adjacent. So opposite is ay. 
so we are going to have our a y everything divided by the adjacent which is a x to find theta is going to be theta is going to be equal to tan inverse a y divided by a x this is the formula for finding the uh, the direction now in vectors whenever we're talking about the direction we're talking about um, the theta okay the angle so sometimes you might be given the direction to say south then it's west yeah something like that but sometimes if if they give you the angle the angle is the direction okay very very important now let's say we have um we have a vector let's say we have a vector Let's just get rid of this. And let's let's assume to say we have a vector. Let's have vector A, which is going to have the magnitude of 20 meters at an angle over 30 degrees. Now find the x component and the y component. Now to find the x component, we know that we have made the formula already. The x component is always is going to be the a cos theta so i'm going to say that my a is 20 cos the theta is 30 so we get our calculator what will be the answer so we have 20 uh, cos 30 i'm getting 17.32 17.32 meters let's get to find the ay the ay is going to be a sin theta so this is going to give us our a is 20 sin 30 this is going to give us 10 meters okay so this is the basic idea behind the introduction to vectors Okay, so in this video, we want just to, to know how we can find the direction of a vector. Okay, so in the previous video, we talked about um, how to find the, the angle and everything. Okay, and uh, for just a recap, we said that if we have got um, a vector, which is lying in the first quadrant, all the vectors are supposed, all the angles are supposed to come from positive x-axis, meaning if I have 20 here, I'm supposed to get the angle from positive x-axis. So it's supposed to come from here all the way to this line. Meaning that for this vector, I'm going to use 20 to resolve it. So all the angles are coming from positive x-axis. That is what we said. So now, let's talk about how to find the same direction. Okay? That is also very, very important. We need to know. So let's have our xy plane. Okay? And then remember, we are going to have... Um, this is going to be our north okay so we have our north our east our south our west so we know that this is the first quadrant this is the second quadrant this is the third quadrant and this is our fourth quadrant now we know that this line here is positive x-axis this line is negative x-axis this line is positive x-axis. This line is negative x-axis. That is very, very important, guys. Now, when you are resolving vectors into x and y component, remember, you are going to be adding those uh, components. Now, you discover to say you have got the x component, which is uh, positive, and the y component is also positive. Now, where do you expect this angle to fall? Definitely, this angle is going to fall in first quadrant. Why? Because in the first quadrant, that's where we have the x is positive, the y is positive. So this line. That angle is going to be in the first quadrant. Now, after using the formula, remember our formula was theta was equal to tan inverse the let's say we have is y 
the y component divided by the x component after plugging in the values using this formula let me let me write it here the x we have tan inverse we have the y divided by the x so after plugging in the values using this formula this formula what we have to understand is that in, that angle is going to fall in the first quadrant now, after finding the theta, that theta is going to be the answer. So, theta is the answer. Okay? Now, let's say that the x component, you discover to say the x component is uh, negative, the y is positive. Let's check. So, we can see that the x is negative is this line, the y is, neg is positive is this line, meaning the angle is supposed to be in second quadrant now in second quadrant after plugging in the values now what i have to, to remind you is that eh, whenever you are using these principles you ignore the negative don't plug in x as a negative just ignore the negative and then after ignoring the negative follow these principles which i'm going to tell you so you are going to say that 180 minus the theta which you're going to find after plugging in the values here okay so you're going to see some examples which we're going to have so now let's go to the next one we have let's say we have the x is negative the y is also negative definitely the angle has to fall in the third quadrant third quadrant we have got the x negative the y positive the angle is supposed to be in this quadrant so in the third quadrant what we do is uh, 180 plus the theta remember you ignore the negative don't plug in as a neg negative here just ignore any negative which you say okay so the fourth one is going to be when the x is a po positive the y is negative so the x is a, a ne positive the y is negative definitely has to fall this angle has to fall in the fourth quadrant in fourth quadrant we have this positive this negative we have negative the y the x positive so it's going for here so now what we need to understand is that when it falls in the third qu fourth quadrant it's going to be 360 minus in minus theta the one which you have found after plugging in the values there that is very very important now let's get to see some examples we we'll see how we can solve some certain examples let's say we have the angle let's say we have the the vector let's have two vectors okay let's have two vectors we have vector a which is 20 20 uh, meters at an angle of um, 40 degrees we have vector b which is lying which is uh, 40 meters at an angle let's say it lies in um toward the positive x axis okay now to resolve these two vectors it's very important for you to come up with um, you come up with a, an xy plane so xy plane is going to be here so we're going to have our vectors we know that uh, the first one is uh, 40 degrees so 40 degrees we know that these vectors they're always measured from positive x axis is going to be here Okay, it's going to be it's going to be here so here is going to be our 40 it's going to be our vector a which is uh, 20 meters so the angle is going to be 40 degrees another one is uh, we have vector B which is lying toward the positive x-axis meaning the angle is zero so to find the question is how can we find the the resultant so to find the resultant since we're talking about the vectors as long as they're asking you to find the resultant they're asking you to find the magnitude and the direction so to find the magnitude first we have to resolve each vector this is vector b which is 40 meters so we have to resolve each vector into x and y components so we're going to say that the ax is going to be we know that resolving a vector into x x is going to be a cos theta so ax is going to be equal to our a is uh, 20 the vector because the angle is 40 so our ax is going to be uh, we are going to have um 20 cos 40 
which is going to be 15.32 15.32 meters so that is the x component let's go to y component a y is going to be a sine theta to resolve any vector into y component is sine so it's going to be um a y is going to be the a is 20 sine 40 so our a y is going to be equal to we have 20 sine 40 12.8 86. I'm getting a 12.86. I've just rounded off is 12.8551 or 75. So I've just rounded off. So to create space, I can put these here. I have AY. I have AX as um 15.32. AY as a uh, 12.86. Cool. Now let me get rid of this let's go to vector b vector b we have um we're going to say that b x is going to be equal to vector b cos theta so the b is uh, 14 because the angle is zero degrees so what is 40 cos zero it's going to be 40 cos zero i'm getting 40 so my bx is 40 meters then i go to the by it's going to be b sine theta it's going to be b sine theta so it's going to be b y it's going to be is a uh, 40 sine 40 oh sine 0 so this is going to give us zero it's going to give us zero now we have the x so now what we need to do is uh, the question is we want to find the resultant let's put them here the a the by the bx is uh, 40 the by is zero let's get rid of this now after resolving each vector into x and y component we need to add the x components alone and the y component alone for us to find the resultant so it's going to be the resultant for x component is going to be the ax plus the bx so the rx is going to be this is the the, the x component or the resultant which we are trying to find so it's going to be the ax is basically uh, 15.32 plus the bx is uh, 14 so we are going to have uh, rx is going to be equal to uh, 40 plus 15.32 so i'm getting 55.32 meters that is the x component of the resultant let's go now to y so we're going to have the y component is going to be a y plus b y so let's plug in the values the a y is a 40 oh the a y is 12.86 the b y is zero so our a y is going to be 12.86 okay so that is our so let's just do this we can just get rid of this now and then we want to find okay let's just get rid of this we want to find the resultant remember so to find the resultant let's just put the rx we know that rx is 55.32 meters we want to find again we have found the ry as a curve 0.86 now we want to find the resultant after getting the after you add the only issue here is that as long as we have been given maybe more than one vectors you have to resolve each vector into x and y component then add the x components alone add the y components alone okay so now after adding them meaning you have now what you have now is this this is the resultant we are trying to find you have now the x component which is the rx and the y component which is the ry meaning we have gone back to the pythagoras theorem so here we are going to say the resultant is going to be equal to the square root of 
the rx squared plus the ry squared so this is going to be so the rx is 55.32 squared plus the ry is 12.86 squared okay so we get our calculator and then we find the value now that will be our magnitude so it's going to be 55.32 i squared plus 12.86 i squared i'm getting um now i need to square root it the answer has to be square root it so i'm getting 56.79 which is the same as just 56.8 so my resultant is going to be 56 point uh, let's just put 56.79 meters so that is my resultant but the moment when you leave the answer just like this meaning this is not a vector a vector can't stand alone without the magnitude sorry without the direction so this is just the magnitude we need to find the direction Area on, we say the vector quantity is a physical quantity which has got both magnitude and direction. So we need to find the direction. Now, to find the direction, remember, we say that to find the direction, we use the formula which is going to be the theta. It's going to be equal to the tan inverse. So it's going to be the ry divided by rx. Then it's going to be the theta, it's going to be equal to tan inverse remember we, we don't have any negative but if we had negative maybe it was negative 12 we would have ignored the negative and follow the principles so ry is at 12.86 the rx is 55.32 let's plug in and find the value of x so it's um shift you press where there's shift and then it's going to be turn it's going to be shift you press where there's turn then you open the brackets it's going to be 12.86 divided by 55.32 close the brackets so i'm getting 13.08 which is just the same as 13.1 so 13.1 degrees that is what i'm getting now after finding the theta you are not done after finding the theta We'll go back to the principles now where we said if the x is positive remember here now i'm talking about the resultant after finding here we can see that our rx was positive our ry was also positive here is positive positive so we go back we said that if ry is positive the x is also positive definitely the angle has to fall because this is the positive y this is the positive x the angle has to fall in this quadrant the first quadrant so the first quadrant the theta which you have found that happened to be your answer meaning that this is our final answer okay very important so if it was negative let's say that the rx was negative so if the rx was negative meaning that the angle was supposed to fall in this quadrant the rx is negative meaning the posi the y is positive it's supposed to fall in this it was supposed to fall in this and then you say 180 minus the theta that will be the final answer okay so you get to see how we are going to be solving the questions because next chapter we are going to talk about how to solve the questions but before we do that we need first to know how to sketch the vectors Okay, thank you for watching this video. See you in the next lesson where we're going to talk about how to sketch the vectors. Okay. Okay, so in this video, we are going to talk about sketching of vectors. Okay, so I hope you managed to watch part three where we talked about um, how to, to know that the angle is supposed to be in the first quadrant, second quadrant. And the fourth quadrant okay we also talked about um how to dissolve vectors into x and y components something like that now here we want to talk about the sketching okay so sketching if you have been given the vectors let's say you have three vectors let's say you have vector a which is uh 20 meters at an angle of um, 30 degrees then you have vector b which is uh, 
30 meters at an angle of um, let's say 210 degrees then you have vector C which is um, let's just say uh, 35 meters at an angle of um, at an angle of um, maybe 3 or let's just say at an angle of um, to let's say 115 degrees okay cool so now how do we sketch these vectors so it's very very simple the first thing to do is uh, you need to come up with xy plane okay so i'm going to come up with my xy plane here so here is going to be my xy plane it's either you can have a visible one or you can have a dotted one so i'm going to have a visible one i'm going to have just a small one so i know that this is my north this is my south this is my east this is my west so the first vector i'm going to assume that this is my origin that is my starting point so the first vector is supposed to start from there all the way to 30 degrees so we know that 30 degrees is some is near east than north so i'm going to put it here say so that is going to be is 20 so i can put just like this so that is going to be now at the end there i'm going to put an arrow so I'm going to say that that is my vector A, which is at 20 meters. Now from here all the way to there, I know that I can even put the angle there that is 30 degrees. Now after, this is our end point of vector A. Now from this end point, I'm supposed to write another dotted form. So I'm going to put another XY plane. So I can even put a dotted one. It's okay. Another XY plane. So I know that this is my positive x-axis. We know that vectors, when we're measuring the angles, they are all coming from positive x-axis. Okay? Now, this is going to be my vector B. So vector B is 210. So where is 210? Is 210 in first quadrant? Is 210 in second quadrant? Is 210 in third quadrant? Or fourth quadrant? Okay. 210 is in third quadrant. So we know that this is our first quadrant, second, third, fourth. Meaning that this 210 is in this quadrant. So I'm going to start from there. I'm going to say that from this line, I'm going to write, I'm going to have another line from there, then it has to go in this direction. Okay, so that is 30 meters. So 30 meters is supposed to be a bit longer than, than vector A. So B is going to be a bit longer than vector A. Okay, then I'm going to say that this is going to be my end point of vector B. So I'm going to say this is my B. And it is um, 30 meters. Now, what I'm going to do is, after reaching at the end point, I need to come up with another xy plane. Okay? So, I know that this is going to be positive x, this is going to be positive y, this is negative x, this is negative y. Again, this is going to be my starting point of vector what is vector c. So, vector c is going to start from there. It's 35 meters, so it's going to be a bit longer than, than vector, vector a and b. So, it's going to start from here from this line now this 115 115 is in th th uh, second quadrant so it's going to be in this quadrant but is it going to be near is it near um, uh is 115 near north this is our north okay this is our north and this is our uh, our south this is our west so is it near west or north okay so how do you know that it's near so this is 115 we know that this part here is 90 meaning 115 is supposed to be we know that from this line all the way to this line is 180 meaning that 115 is near north so i'm going to say that this is going to be it's going to start from there all the way until so it's supposed to be a bit longer than all the vectors okay so i can put it here so that is my end point of vector c which is 35 meters now, to find the resultant, the resultant is supposed to be the connection, the addition over from the first point of the first vector. This is the first point of the first vector until the last point of the last vector. So that is going to be our resultant. So you can say that that is going to be our R. Now, it's either you can resolve this vector and find the magnitude and direction now from this line here you can see that this resultant it is lying in second quadrant this is the second quadrant 
So even if you, you, you resolve this vector into x and y component, you are going to discover that the magnitude of this vector is going to fall in second quadrant. Okay, so that is caching. Now, let's have another example. Let's have, let's have four different vectors. Let me just include another one. Let's say we have another vector d, which is um, 40. Let's just put 25. Now let's put the, let's change the angles, the directions. So let's have this one is due. Let's say this is due, uh, due east. Then this is at an angle of uh, thirty degrees. Uh, let's say thirty-five degrees. This is at an angle of um. We put uh, due south. Or due west. Okay, it's due west. Then this is at an angle of three, three thirty degrees. Let's now sketch these vectors. So the first thing to do is um, we have to put um, we have to put the x y prime here. So I'm going to have my x y prime here. Just a small one, if you want. So this is going to be my origin. I know that this is north, this is uh, east, this is uh, west, south, this is west. So it's supposed to start from the origin all the way to this point here. Now it's supposed to, to move 20 meters. So I'm going to say this is going to be my vector, my vector A. Okay. So it has ended there. So that is my A, which is uh, 20 meters. We know that when you say due east, the angle is zero, so it is in, in east side. Okay, now this is going to be my first point now for another vector, so I'm going to put an xy plane again here. So this vector, they're saying it, it, it is going 35 meters, or oh, 35, 35 meters at an angle of 35 degrees. So it has to start from this, this is going to be our origin. Now 35, is it near now north or, or east? It's near it's near east, so it's going to be, th this is supposed to be in this direction. So it's supposed to be a bit longer than vector A. Okay, so it's going to be somewhere there. So we say this is 30. So we end there. That is going to be our vector B, which is 30 meters. So you can even indicate the angles if you want. You can say that from this point, you say this point here, you say this angle here is what? is 35 degrees then we have reached now here you make another xy plane so we have been told that this vector is due east due west west this is north this is east this is south this is west meaning that this angle this vector is lying in this direction so it's 35 35 is supposed to be a bit longer than b so it's going to go there okay we make it a bit long so we end there Again, after reaching there, I make another xy plane because I have another vector. So I know that here I've made this one. This is also east. This is north. This is south. This is uh, this is west. This is three thirty. So where is three thirty? Three thirty is uh, in this line. It's supposed to be in this line, but it's going to be near. It's supposed to be near east than than uh, south okay so i'm going to start from here so i'm going to start from there then i say this is 25 although 25 uh, 25 is going to be just a bit longer than 20 okay so i can even finish it there so i say this is my my uh b my c uh, it's my d sorry which is at uh, 25 Okay, then this angle from here all the way to this side is going to be 330. So to find the resultant, the resultant is the connection from the first point until the last what? From this point, first point, to the last vector. So this is going to be my resultant. So if you happen to find this vector, you resolve it into X and Y component and find the resultant. You are going to see that the answer which you are going to find, the angle is going to fall in the fourth quadrant. As you can see, this is the one we are looking for. So it's going to be in the fourth quadrant. Okay, so this is how you do, or this is how you can sketch vectors.
it's not complicated so you can just change some values there and then you try you, you try it out on how you can sketch it okay so now from here let's try to um, let's try to resolve this vector into x and y component and then let's find the resultant from from here how do we find the resultant so to find the resultant we are saying that this angle is supposed to be in fourth quadrant so let's see if it's going to fall in the fourth quadrant fourth quadrant okay so let's resolve it into x and y component let's start with um vector m so we know that we said resolving a vector into x and y component we have to um, we get the vector we get the vector okay we get the vector then he, the, for example this is a so it's going to be a x is going to be equal to a cos theta so this is going to be a x it's going to be equal to a is 20 then due east the angle is 0 so it's going to be cos 0 so a x is going to be equal to cos uh, 20 cos 0 we are going to get um we're going to get a 20 okay so that is the x component let's let's have our y component so y component is going to be a sine theta so a y is going to be equal to our a is 20 sine 0 so sine 0 is going to be 0 0 times 20 we are going to get a 0 so i can just put it here to say we have our ax okay we have our um, ax as 20 ay 0 let's go to the next vector we have vector b this is of vector b into x and y component we want to find the resultant so it's going to be uh, b x is going to be equal to b sine b cos theta so it's going to be 30 cos 35 okay so let's see what we're going to get so 30 we have 30 in cos um, 30 cos 35 so it's 25.57 okay so i'm going to put it here bx is 24.57 so let's see our bx or our, our by sorry so by is going to be b we know that in y in y is going to be uh, b which is 30 sine 35 so we have uh, 30 sine sine 35 i'm getting 17.21 uh, okay let's go to um, the next vector let's go to vector um, vector c so cx is going to be equal to the 35 because uh, due west is 180 the angle is 180 so this is going to give us a negative 35 so our b our cx is going to be equal to negative 35 then our cy is going to be equal to our cy is going to be cy it's going to be c is 35 and then sine 180 it's going to give us zero okay so from there then we go to d where we'll be able to, to talk about dx dx is going to be 25 cos 330 so dx is going to be 25 cos um cos 330 so i'm getting to 21.65 21.65 let's talk about dy so dy is going to be uh, 25 sine dy is going to be 25 sine 330 so 25 sine 330 i'm getting negative 12.5 Okay, now after getting these, 
the x component we now get rid of this we no longer need this we want to find the resultant so we need first to find the x we need to add the x components alone the y components alone okay so we're going to say that the x component or the resultant is going to be it's going to be ax plus bx plus cx plus dx so our rx is going to be equal to our ax is um 20 our bx is 24.57 plus our cx is negative 35 plus our dy or our dx is um 21 21.65 so we can add these values and then we are going to see that we are going to have 20 plus 20 plus 24.57 57 24.57 plus it's going to be minus 35 plus 21.65 okay so I'm getting 31.22 31.22 is meters so we can get rid of this we can just put our resultant there on top let's just put it here our rx is 31.2 meters now let's find the y component of the resultant so it's going to be it's going to be the a y plus b y plus c y plus um d y so we plug in the values we can see that a y is uh, zero by is seventeen point two one plus cy is zero plus negative twelve point five so our ry is going to be what our ry is going to be it's going to be what it's going to be um, 17.21 and then we have 17.21 plus open brackets negative 12.5 I'm getting 4.8 4.71 meters so to find the resultant to find the resultant is going to be the resultant is going to be equal to the square root of r x squared plus r y squared so we can now plug in the values let's just put our resultant here the y component which is 4.71 Okay, so we are going to have this we're going to have um, we plug in the values okay so it's going to be uh, 31.22 squared plus 4.71 squared so our resultant is going to be 31.22 squared plus 4.71 squared I get the square root I'm getting 31.57 31.57 meters that is the resultant now to find the angle we know what to do so I guess we have made a mistake somewhere because the other y was supposed to be negative so that the answer the answer was supposed to be in fourth quadrant so anyway it's okay so let's just go ahead and find the angle so it's going to be theta it's going to be equal to tan inverse rx 
So you plug in the values and find the value of what? The value of theta. Okay, so that is it for sketching. I hope you have enjoyed. Okay, so let's continue now. We are talking about vectors. Okay, in the previous video, we, we came up with the formulas on how to come up with uh, the x component. And we said that if for us to find the x component, if we maybe we have got a vector a. So we say that if this vector a is supposed to be, if we want to find the x component, it's going to be vector a cos theta. Then the y component is going to be the a sin theta then we say that if we want to find the fi the the direction which is the theta the angle so it's tan theta is going to be equal to ay divided by ax then theta is going to be equal to tan inverse ay ax okay so this is the basic idea which we have to understand under vectors okay now um let's say we want to um, we have a vector so first of all, we want first to talk about the angles. How can you choose the angle? So let's have our x y plane. Okay, here is our x y plane. Okay, so here is our x y plane. And then let's say we have a vector. Let's have vector a. Okay, that is our vector a. Now, maybe we have been given the angle to say this angle here is 20 degrees to resolve vector a into x and y the angle which we are going to use is going to be the 20 so as long as we are talking about the vectors we are measuring the angles from positive x axis so this is negative this is negative y this is positive y so to get the angle which you are supposed to use when when plugging in the values here to say this is going to be cos so this theta is going to be we are getting the angle from this line all the way until it touches the vector so this line all the way until it touches the vector is 20 meaning that 20 is going to be the angle which we are going to use okay and let's say that we have a vector where the angle is here we have the vector there then we have got our angle here 20 degrees so which angle are we going to use for us to resolve this vector? Remember, we are getting the angle from positive x until it touches the vector. Meaning that from this point here all the way to this line, it is 90. So we're supposed to say 90 minus 20, which is going to be 70. Meaning that the angle which is going to be here is going to be 70 degrees. Okay. Now let's let's have different things. Let's have uh, a different thing. Let's say we have um, the angle a vector which is somewhere there okay then we have been given that here is 40 degrees so to resolve this vector into x and y component we are supposed to get the angle the angle which we are going to use is supposed to come from this line until it touches that line okay so we know that from this line all the way to this line it is 180 okay so we're going to say that 180 180 minus 40 okay so the answer is going to be 140 so the angle which you're going to use is going to be 140 now let's say we have the angle here let's say the angle is here we have vector a then here is the angle the angle there is 20 degrees so we know that for us to resolve this vector is supposed to come from this line until it touches this line so we know that from this line all the way to this line it is 90 so 90 plus 20 supposed to be 110 okay then let's say we have another vector which is lying in th third quadrant so let's say the vector is here this is vector b we want to resolve vector b into x and y component and let's say that the angle which is here is um is uh 30 degrees remember we want to get the angle from this line okay from this line all the way until it touches this line so we know that from this line here all the way to this line is 180 so 180 plus 30 is going to give us what um it's going to give us 210 okay so that one you have to know now let's say we have another another thing which is here 
let's say the angle is here here is the 30 so we have the set degrees there and then we want to get the angle which is going to help us to resolve this vector into x and y component getting the angle from this point all the way until it touches this line we know that from this point all the way to this line is 180 then we know that from this point all the way to this point is 90 so we're going to say 90 minus 30 which is going to be 60 meaning this part is 60 so it's going to be 180 plus 60 degrees so it's going to be 180 plus 60 is going to be 240 so the angle which we are going to use is going to be 240 degrees let's now go to fourth quadrant we see what we are going to be having okay so let's say we have let's say we have the angle which is going to be here okay then we want to get the angle let's say this angle is 30 20 degrees let's just say 20 so we know that to resolve this vector into x and y component the angle is supposed to come from positive x axis so we are measuring the angle and clockwise they are going in this direction and not clockwise the moment when you go to clockwise meaning you are, you are talking about negative angles now so we are starting from this line until all the way touches this line so we know that this point here is 270 we know that this is 90 this is 0 this is 180 this is 270 then again when we reach at this point from here all the way to this line again it's going to be 360 okay so if a vector is um is in fourth quadrant and then we have been given the angle this is going to be 270 plus 20 which is going to be 290 now if you have been given the angle here let's say the angle is uh, is here uh, 20 let's say 30 so we're getting the line from here all the way until it touches there so it's supposed to be we know that the, the full circle is 360 is going to be 360 minus 30 which is going to be 330 so that's how we get the angles actually very very important you have to know that okay now from here we need to let's also talk about um, something else the same thing but a different one we have the xy plane here is our xy plane now as we we are saying that we are measuring the angles from positive x axis this is positive this is negative x this is um, negative y okay this is positive y so what we have to understand is that when you have been told that a vector is lying toward the positive x-axis or this is the same as east this is west this is south or this is north this is south if a vector is going toward the positive x-axis meaning it is going toward east sometimes they might tell you to say a vector is going toward east or a vector is moving in positive x-axis okay whenever you see that is positive x-axis meaning that vector is in this line that vector is in this line and that vector the angle is zero so the angle is zero when the vector lies in positive x direction then when a vector is in uh, to, is going towards positive y direction or north the angle is 90 so here is zero here is 19 here is 0, here is 90, here is 180, here is uh, 270. So if a vector is going toward positive, negative x-axis or west, the angle is uh, 180. If the vector is going toward south or toward negative y direction, the angle is 270. That one you have to know. Okay, very, very important. Now from here let's talk about um, let's talk about the terms which they use in vectors. So in vectors you are going to find that you are going to come across these terms. So we are saying that this is um, north 
this is south this is east this is west now the terms we, the first terms which are going to come across is um uh north maybe you have got vector a which is going north of east north of west south of west south of east south of uh, west sometimes it might be east of south yeah it's the same thing east of south so now whenever we are talking about this let's say we have got the angle we have got vector a which is um vector a is um 20 meters at an angle of 40 degrees now they are saying that it is north of east what it means is that this angle is near east than north so if we if we check here we have got north and east meaning this 40 degrees is near north than east so meaning that the, here is the angle it's going to be like somewhere there so here is our 40 degrees this 40 degrees is supposed to be near just a minute this 40 degrees is supposed to be near east than south than north so it is near to the last part than the first part so this 40 is going to be here meaning when resolving this vector into x and y component i'm going to use the same angle which is going to be 40 because we are measuring the angles from positive x axis so it's going to come here until it touches the vector okay now let's say we have the same one now it is north of west meaning that the angle is near west than north meaning that the angle is here is here this 40 is here so to resolve this vector we are going to get the angle from this point all the way to this line meaning it's supposed to be 180 minus 40 which is going to be 140 okay then we have south of east so as long as you see of north of east south of east north of what what so the last part meaning that the, the that angle is near to the last part than the first part okay so let's say we have a vector a which is with 20 meters at an angle 40 degrees south of east south of east meaning this is the the angle is near east than south so here is going to be our angle but when resolving this the angle is supposed to come from this line here all the way until it touches the vector so it's going to be 360 minus the 40 degrees that is very very important guys okay now let's say we have um we have this let's have just a different one just a bit different one let's get to have a different one let's say we have um let's say we have this is north south east west so we have the angle which is um 20 degrees west of north the angle is near north than west meaning this 20 degrees is here here is the 20 degrees it has to be near north than west so when resolving this angle i'm supposed to get the angle from this line until it touches that line so meaning from this line to this line is 90 90 plus 20 so it's going to be um 110 that you have to know okay so the angle is near to the last part than the first part now let's say you have been told that you have vector a you have vector a which is 20 30 degrees clockwise clockwise i'm saying that the angles on vectors we are measuring them and clockwise they are supposed to go in this direction whenever you see clockwise meaning the angle they have measured it using in that direction meaning it is going toward negative meaning that angle is starting from here until somewhere there that will be our what that will be our 30 
So to get the angle which we are going to resolve this, it's going to start from this line until it touches this line. It's going to be 360 minus minus 30. Or you can even put, you can just say this is going to, to have a negative, which is going to be the same. If you plug in, um, let's say we have 20. The, 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 the magnitude is 20, 20 cos 330 degrees and 20 cos negative. If you put negative, since it's going in opposite direction, negative 30, we are going to get the same answer. But I encourage you using this. Okay? So that is very, very important. Now, next, let's talk about um, the second terms which we are going to come across. So we have our x, y plane. Okay, so here is our x, y plane. Let's, let's, let's continue. We have the north. We have the north. We have the south. We have the east. We have the west. Now, here is the issue, guys. Uh, you are going to come across some certain terms. They are going to tell you that we have angle the vector a which is 20 meters no they're going they're not going to give you the angle but they're going to tell you that it is lying north east sometimes they can say north west sometimes they can say south east then they can say south west so as long as there is nothing in between here meaning that that angle is in between so this angle it is 20 degrees. This 20 degrees is in between north and east. So the angle is going to be, this vector is lying here. It's going to be between. So you know that here is 90. So what uh, what number is between 90? Meaning this part is 45. This is 45. To resolve this angle in this uh, this vector into x and y component, we are going to get the angle from this line until it touches that line. So it's going to be 45. Now let's talk about north. We are talking about north of north northwest. So northwest meaning the angle is here. So it's going to be both 45, 45, 45, 45. But we know that to resolve this angle, we are supposed to get the angle from this. To resolve this vector, we are supposed to get the angle from positive x-axis until it touches the vector. Simple, right? Yeah. So it touches the vector, then we are going to see that it's going to be 90 plus 45, just like that. Let's go to the next one. We are talking about now is southeast. So southeast is going to be southeast is going to be in between here. So we have 45, 45. The angle is going to be from this line, it touches this line. 180, we know that from here to there, 180. 180 plus 45. That will be the angle to use. Okay. Now next we are talking about um we are talking about uh southwest. Southwest is going to be uh, oh, this was southeast, which was supposed to be here. So this is 45, this is 45. This was southeast. I made a mistake. I talked about southwest instead of southeast. So southeast is what we have there. So it's going to be from this line all the way until there. So it's going to be 270 plus 45. Which is going to be the same even if you say 360 minus 45. It's the same thing. Okay. So southeast, is, southwest I've already explained is in this one. 45, 45. You get the angle there. So that is the basic idea behind vectors. It's very, very important for you to know how to get the angle. Which angle are we going to use to resolve this vector into x and y component? Very, very important. Next lesson, we are going to talk about how to know to say this angle falls in this quadrant, this quadrant, this quadrant, and how to get the angle and how to represent them. And also how to sketch the vectors. Okay, thank you for watching this video. See you in the next lesson. So let's talk about sketching and free body diagram. So in this case, this FBD is just basically free body diagram. Okay, so what's the difference between sketching and free body diagram? So we're going to talk about this in difference to vectors. Okay, so let's have three vectors. Let's have vector A. We say that vector A is um, 20 meters at an angle of 30 degrees. Let's say we have vector B. 
which is uh, 35 meters at an angle of um, 155 degrees let's say we have vector c which is um, 10 meters at an angle of um, 320 degrees now when you have been asked to say sketch the vector or like the free body diagram those are two different things so let's talk about free body diagram first now when it comes for free body diagram a free body diagram is something that you yourself who is representing that work can understand but sketching is giving the information exactly the way they are okay so now when it comes for free body diagram for example here we have three vectors how can we come up with a free body diagram now when it comes for vectors a free body diagram can be represented by xy plane okay so we have let's say we have an xy plane here is the xy plane okay so I'll put it here here is my xy plane so we do know that we have we are going to have the north the south the east and the west the first vector is saying which is vector a is saying 30 degrees so we know that the vectors they are measured from positive x axis meaning that this first vector which we have here is supposed to start from here all the way to there so we have 30 degrees so here is going to be my 30 degrees then I'm going to say this is my vector A. So I'm going to say this is my vector A, which is 20 meters. So I'm going to put even the angle there to say my angle is 30 degrees. Now vector B is 155. Where can we find 155? 155 is found in the second quadrant. So I'm going to get my... I'll go to my second quadrant and I'll say that this is going to be my 155. Okay? And I'll say that is my vector what? That is my vector B, which is um, 35 meters. Now, we know that we are measuring the angles from positive x-axis until it touches the vector. So, it's going to start from here all the way until it touches there. So, that would be the angle which we are talking about, which is 155 degrees. Vector C is 3, 320 degrees. So, 320 is found in the fourth quadrant. So, I'm going to go there in the fourth, qu in the fourth quadrant and say this is going to be my vector what my vector c okay so that is going to be my vector c which is uh, 10 meters so we know that the angle is supposed to come from the first quadrant from the first quadrant which is the positive x-axis and all the way until it touches the vector so that is going to be our angle which is going to be 320 degrees so the diagram which i've given you here this is a free body diagram okay now when it comes for sketching sketching is a bit different so here's a uh, here's going to be the sketching so we're going to have you first need to have an xy plane as well that will that that is going to be our starting point so i'm going to have my xy plane here okay and i'm going to say that this is going to be my first point okay so that is going to be my first point so that first point there we have we have uh, the vector which is vector a which is 20 meters so even when it comes for sketching this is 20 meters this is 35 meters this is 10 meters even the the vectors themselves they are going to differ in terms of the length okay so 20 is going to be a bit longer it's going to be a bit longer than c which is a uh, vector a is going to be a bit longer than vector c and vector b is going to be a bit longer than a and c so we're going to start here to say this is going to be vector a so vector a start from there so it's 30 it's 20 meters so i'm going to put there to say that will be now my destination i'm going to say this is my vector my vector a which is uh, 20 meters i can even put the angles to say from this line here all the way to that la line is c uh, 30 degrees okay so i'm going to put that probably that is 30 degrees that is my destination so from there now i'm going to put another dotted line that dotted line is going to help me to to know 
where am I supposed to go? So I'm going to put just a dotted line to put an x, y prime, and then I'm going to come there and say I'm going to vector b. Vector b is 155. So the, here we have the x, we have 1, 2, 3, 4. So here is the second quadrant. We know that this vector is found in the second quadrant. Okay? So we're going to go there and say this is going to be our vector. But it's 35. It's supposed to be a bit longer than vector a. So as you can see, it's a bit longer. So that is my 35 there. Which is going to be, I'm going to say that that is my vector. That is my vector b, which is 35 meters. So again, that is my destination. I've reached. Now I'm going to make another x, y prime. Just a small one. Okay. I know that this is 1, 2, 3, 4. This is my fourth quadrant. And I know that vector C is found in the fourth quadrant. So I'm going to go in the fourth quadrant and say this vector. But it's 10 meters. It's supposed to be a bit shorter than uh, vector A. So it's going to be shorter than vector A. So it's going to be there. Then I'm going to put it there to say that is my vector what? That is my vector C, which is 10 meters. So if I want, I can say this vector here, from this line here all the way to this line, that is 155 degrees. Then here I'm going to say from this line all the way to this line, that is going to be my 320 degrees. Simple, right? Then we need now to find the resultant. The resultant is the connection from the first point from the origin all the way to the last vector. So the, here was our origin, and then the last vector is this one. So that connection there, that is the resultant vector. So that is going to be my resultant vector, R. Now resultant vector is the addition of vector A plus vector B plus vector C. Okay, now, when the question is asking you to come up with a free body diagram, you need to come up with this. So this is a free body diagram. And then if they ask you to sketch, this is what you are supposed to do. That is sketching. So that is the difference between sketching and free body diagram. Okay. In this tutorial, we are going to talk about our practice questions under vectors. I've got a number of questions with me here. So let's start with this one. What are the x components and y component of a vector A in xy plane if the direction is 25, 250 degrees counterclockwise from positive, from positive direction of the x axis and its magnitude is 7.3 meters? Okay. So let's have our xy plane. So this is our xy plane. We do have the vector which is 7.3 meters. They are saying counterclockwise. So counterclockwise is the same as anticlockwise. Okay. So meaning that the vector is starting from positive x-axis until it touches the vector. So the vector is going to be 250 is in third quadrant. So it is here. This is our vector here. So this vector is 7.3 meters. The angle from this point all the way to this point is 250 degrees. Okay. Now they want us to find the x component and the y component. Remember, to find the x component of the vector, we get the vector cos theta. So in this case, we have got 7.3 is going to be 7.3 cos theta. So this is going to be our x component. So x will be equal to 7.3 cos 250 degrees. So our x component is going to be, what is 7.3 cos 250? So this is giving me negative 2.49 which is the same as 4.5 Okay, now it is in meters, it's going to be in meters as well. The y component is going to be 7.3 sine the theta, which is 250. So we're going to have the y component. We have 7.3 sine 250 degrees. 
so I'm getting negative 6.859 which is the same as 8, um, 86 meters so these are the x and y components of the vector now we need to find again the direction to find the direction that is going to be uh, theta is equal to tan inverse then you have got the y component divided by the x component so in this case remember if the x component is negative and the y component is negative we expect our angle to be in what? to be in third quadrant okay so the question is saying uh, what are the x and the y components so in this case we already have the, the direction which is 250 so there is no need of us finding the direction so we are only required to find the x and the y components of this vector so that is it for, for this question let's go to the next question so our next question is uh, the displacement vector r in the xy plane is 15 meters long and directed at an angle of 30 degrees as shown in the figure below determine the x and y component of the vector to find the x component of this vector we're going to say the rx is going to be r cos theta so rx will be what is our r in this case our r is 15 the angle is 30 so our rx is going to be 15 cos 30 which is going to be a 12.99 which is the same as just 13.0 meters so that is the x component of vector r to find the y component of vector r is going to be r y is going to be equal to r sine theta so we're going to have r y the r is 15 then you have sine the theta is 30 degrees so our r y is going to be 7.5 meters so the y component of vector r is 7 0.5 meters so these are the uh, x and y component of vector r question 3 the x component of vector a is negative 25 meters and the y component is positive 40 meters but a what is the magnitude of vector a but B, what is the angle between the direction of A and the positive direction of X? Okay, so in short, that part 1A, which is part A, is asking us to find the magnitude of this vector, A. Then part B is asking us to find the direction of vector A. So to find the magnitude, we know that A is going to be the square root of AX squared plus B, O a y squared okay so our vector a is going to be our a x in this case we have the x component which is a negative 25 we square it plus the y component is 40 now we square it our a the vector a is going to be negative 25 which is going to be 25 squared plus 40 squared I get the square root I'm getting 47 so in this case 47.17 meters this is my magnitude to find the direction first we have to identify in which quadrant we expect this angle to be okay now we do know that our x component in this case is negative our y component is uh, positive where do we expect our angle to be if i have got my x y plane i can see that this is positive x this is negative x this is positive negative y in that direction okay in that direction we've got negative y then you have got a positive y so if x is negative this is x negative then y positive is this line we expect our angle to be in the second quadrant if the angle falls in second quadrant using this formula theta is equal to tan inverse ay divided by ax we are going to plug in positive values in this formula then if the angle falls in the sec second quadrant we are going to say 
uh, 180 minus the theta which we are going to find provided that we have plug in positive values only here if we discover to say the x component is negative the y component is positive meaning that using this formula uh, if both are negative in short x component is negative y component is negative in this formula plug in only positive values ignore the negative then you are going to say if it falls in the third quadrant you're going to say 180 plus the feeder which you're going to find okay then if the angle falls in this first quadrant meaning that the x component is positive the y component is also at positive you get the same theta. The theta which you are going to find using this formula, that is your answer. If the angle falls in the fourth quadrant, meaning that the x component is positive, the y component is negative. Meaning, you plug in only negative or positive values in this formula, then you are going to say 360 minus the theta. As simple as that. So now, in in this case, since we have identified that the angle is going to be in second quadrant, since the x component of a is negative the y component is positive so we're going to say theta is going to be equal to tan inverse a y divided by a x let's plug in the values so theta is going to be tan inverse the a y which we have already here the x the y component of vector a is 40 divided by a 25 okay so our theta is going to be shift turn open brackets 40 divided by 25 so it's giving me 57.999 which is the same as just 58.0 okay 58 degrees now we need to say 180 minus 58 degrees which is going to be 122 so in this case the direction for vector a is 122 degrees from positive x axis okay so that is it for this question so the next question is saying express the following angles in radians so we have 20 degrees so we have to convert this into radian now what we have to understand is that um if i've got 2 pi large this is the same as 360 degrees okay so it starts from here in one revolution we have got 360 degrees then we have 2 pi rad now for now we are only interested in this okay so if i'm trying to convert the lad into second i can here i can divide both sides by what by two even here by two i can see that in one lad we're going to have 180 degrees meaning that what i'm going to do here is if i say pi not one lad but i have pi lad okay so in this case we can see that if i've got 20 degrees i want to convert this into what into um i want to convert this into what into lad so meaning that i'm going to say times um i'm going to say in 180 degrees how many lads are there we've got pi lad okay so zero and zero will go so we're going to have two over 18 so we're going to have two there is a is one then two there are nine so we've got pi over nine okay so this is going to be our our 20 degrees in the radian okay now let's use the same method converting 50 and 100 so this 50 is going to be 50 degrees times i'm going to have in 180 degrees there is a pi so this zero and zero will go we're going to have five pi over 18 that is it 100 degrees is going to be times 180 divided by the opposite is supposed to be the opposite we're going to have pi on top then 180 here so we can cancel the zero we're going to have 10 pi divided by 18 so we can see that 2 into is going to be 5 2 there are 9 so i've got 5 over 9 pi okay 
Now, the next question is saying, convert the following angles to degrees. So we have got radian to degree. So we are going to say 0 0.330 lat. This is going to be times. Okay. We're going to have times. We're going to say um, in 180, how many lad do we have? We have got pi. Okay. Pi land. So what we're going to do, the lad and lad will cancel. Okay. If the lad and lad will cancel, we're going to say 0 0.3. 30. If you're using a calculator, you can find the exact value times 180. Then the answer you're going to find divide it by pi. Okay, so in this case, I'm finding 18.9, which is the same as just 19 degrees. Okay, now the next one is um, 2.10 lad. So we're going to say times in we have got pi lad has to be equal to 180. Okay. So the lad and lad will cancel. We're going to have 2.10 times 180. I divide it by I divide it by pi. So I'm getting 120.3. 120.32 that is going to be our angle in degrees the next one is 7.70 so we have a 7.70 rad so we're going to say times in one lad which is pi lad there is 180 degrees so lad and lad do cancel we're going to have 7.70 times 180 then I divide it by the pi. So this is going to give us, see, let's redo it. We are saying 7.70 times 180. So we divide it by pi. So this is giving me 441.18. This is the angle we should have in this case. So that is it for this question. So we have another question which is saying a ship set out to sail to a point 120 kilometers just north. An expected storm brought the ship to a point 100 kilometers due east of its starting point how far but a how far and but b in what direction must it now see to reach its original destination so it is very very important for us to understand this question let's come up with a free body diagram so we have the xy plane this ship is starting from here going to uh, toward north so this is going to be our direction from this original going this direction okay so they are saying that in, in this direction, this is going to be uh, 120 kilometers. Then starting from the original again, going toward east. Okay. Going toward the east. So they want us to find, this is 100 kilometers. Now they want us to find the direction and the magnitude. In short, we are finding the, the resultant. So from this point, all the way to this point. That is going to be our resultant. Okay. So this is the same as we can put 120 in this direction. We say we have it here. That is the resultant we are trying to find. We have a hundred kilometers. We have a 120 kilometers. To find the resultant in this case is going to be the square root of 100 squared. So 100 squared plus 120 squared. So this is going to give us, if we punch using our calculator, we're going to get 156.2 kilometers. So this is the magnitude. Now to find the direction, we know that it's going to be theta is equal to 
turn inverse so um in this case turn inverse we're going to have what we're going to have 120 divided by 100 our direction in this case the theta is going to be 50.2 degrees so the direction how far it is 156.2 kilometers at an angle of 50.2 degrees from positive x-axis okay now we have the next one which is saying in the figure below a half piece of machinery is laced by sliding it at uh, a distance d 12.5 meters along uh, along a plank oriented at an angle of 20 degrees to the horizontal how far is it moved vertically and horizontally so in short in this case they are just asking about the x and the y component so how far vertically they are asking about what they are asking about the y component so it's vy that is vertically so it's going to be v sine theta so vy in this case oh we have got a d let's use d and not v it's not the velocity it's the d so it's going to be dy it's going to be d sine theta so we're going to have our dy which is going d is just basically uh 12.5 sine the angle is 20 degrees so how far vertically is going to be 12.5 um sine 20 which is going to be 4.28 so 4.28 meters that is going to be how far vertically it was moved now to find how far it was moved horizontally that is going to be the x component so we're going to have dx will be equal to d cos theta dx will be equal to d in this case is 12.5 because the theta is um, 20 degrees so dx will be equal to 12 okay so what will be 12 if we do 12 cos which is 12.5 12.5 cos 20 which is 11.75 11.75 meters that is going to be how how far it was moved horizontally okay so that is it for this question number seven a person walks in the following pattern 3.1 kilometers north then 2.4 kilometers west and finally 5.2 kilometers south but a sketch the vector diagram that represents this motion b how far and c in what direction would a bed fly in a straight line from the same starting point to the same uh, to the same final point so sketching vector is very very simple sketching is totally different from free body diagram a free body diagram is a diagram which you yourself who is writing that diagram can understand but sketching we need to get exactly the information which have been given here then we represent it okay now what you're going to do here is uh, the first point what you have to do is uh, you're going to have the starting point so the starting point let's say this is our starting point here I'm going to start from that point now this is going to be my starting point so they're saying that uh, a person walks in the following pattern 3.1 kilometers north meaning that from this point it's going to be going in this direction 3.1 okay that is going to be 3.5 so I'll, I'll even put here to say 3.1 kilometers next from this point now another one is 2.4 kilometers west west is in this direction 
So two point is supposed to be a bit shorter than the one which we have. Okay. So I'm going to say this is going to be my my two point my two point four kilometers. So even this one I can put it outside if I want. Okay, I'm going to put it outside to say this is a three point one kilometers. Now from this point here they are saying that finally five point two kilometers south. So this is going to be five, but this is supposed to be a bit longer than two point four at the same time than three point one. So it's going to start from this point, it goes there. So this is going to be our five. So we are saying this is going to be our five point two kilometers. So the straight line is that is going to be the resultant. The straight line from the starting point all the way to the last point. That is the resultant. So I'm going to call that one as the resultant. So now they want us this is the sketching which they want. So initially this is the sketching, meaning we are done with part two. We are done with um, part one, which is part A. But B is saying how far. So it is connected to part C, how far and in what direction. So in this case, we need first to resolve each vector into x and y component. Okay. So let's represent this one to be vector A. This one to be vector B. To make things simple, this one to be vector C. Meaning that I need to add. I'm going to say. I'm going to say a x plus b x plus c x plus c. We only have c. Has to be equal to the resultant. Now, the x component of the resultant. Why am I adding the x component? You need first to resolve each vector into x and y component. Add the x component alone. And the y components alone. So in this case, we're going to have a x is going to be a cos theta plus b is going to be b cos theta c is going to be c cos theta. This is going to be equal to we want to find the x component or the resultant. So in this case, a is three point one. Okay, cos the angle in this case since it's going toward north, the angle is ninety degrees. Okay, plus B is 2.4. So I'm going to have 2.4 cos the angle in this case, since it's going toward the negative x axis, which is west, the angle is 180. Plus C is 5.2 cos the angle since it's going toward the south is 270. Has to be equal to the x, comp the x component of the resultant. So we're going to have um, 3. 3.1 cos 90 plus 2.4 cos 180 plus 5.2 cos 270. So this is going to give me uh, negative 2.4. So this is giving me negative 2.4 is equal to the x component of the resultant. Now that I have the x component, let's find the y component. So the Rx is negative 2.4 okay, kilometers. So I'm going to get rid of this. And now I need to find the y component. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to say Ay plus By plus Cy is equal to the y component of the resultant. So it's going to be this in y. Um, y component is going to be sine sine theta plus b sine theta plus c sine theta has to be equal to the ROI. Now a is 3.1 this sine 90 the angle is 90 degrees plus b is 2.4 sine the angle in that case is 180 degrees plus this is 5.2 sine 270 has to be equal to the y component. So in this case, we're going to have 3.1 sine 90 plus 2.4 sine 180 plus 5.2 sine 270. So the answer I'm getting is um, uh, negative 2.1, that is my y component.
So the y component of the, resu of the resultant is a negative two point negative two point one kilometers. Now to find the magnitude of this resultant, this is what we are going to do. We are going to say the resultant is going to be the square root of r x squared plus r y squared. So that is the displacement which you are finding, which is how far. So we are going to have the square root of negative 2.4 squared plus negative 2.1 squared. So we are going to have 2.4 squared plus 2.1 squared. Now when you are plugging in the values here using a calculator, you need just to ignore the negative because it is squared. So the negative is going to be cancelled. Okay. So we are going to have 3.0, the resultant, which is going to be 3.0, 3.89, which is the same as 3.2 kilometers. Now that we have the resultant, we need to find the direction. So it is 3.2 mm, kilometers. Now in what direction? To find the direction, us knowing that the the x component is negative, the y component is, neg is negative, we expect our angle to be in third quadrant. Even from the diagram here, we can see that this is going to be in the third quadrant. Okay? You can see, it's in third quadrant. So we need to, to see. So from here, we can see from the x and y component that the, the angle is going to be in third quadrant. So if the angle is going to be in third quadrant, we're going to say the answer which we're going to find, we, we're going to add the theta, with our t, 1 eight. so it's going to be theta is equal to tan inverse r y divided by r x so theta will be equal to tan inverse r y is uh, we're going to ignore the negative is a uh, 2.1 then this is 2.4 so we have shift tan open brackets 2.1 divided by 2.4 so this is giving me theta to be equal to 41.2 degrees. So now, since it's supposed to be in third quadrant, we are going to say 180 plus 41.2 degrees. So the direction in this case is going to be, it's going to be 180, 180 plus 41.2 degrees, which is going to be 200 and 221.2 degrees that is going to be the direction so that is it for this question so our question 8 is saying you are to make four straight line moving over your flat desert floor starting at the origin of an xy coordinate system and ending at the xy coordinate which is a negative 40 negative 140 meters comma 30 meters so this is our resultant in this case so these are the coordinate for the resultant meaning that the x component because the first part is the x component meaning that the x component of the resultant is 140 meters the y component of the resultant in this case is going to be 30 meters so they're saying that in the x component and the y component of your move are the following uh, respectively in meters. So the first part we can say it is a, you can just assume that that is a, meaning we have got ax which is 20 and we have got our bx to be equal to what? Oh, our ay, sorry, our ay to be equal to 60. Then you're going to have b which is going to be bx the one we don't know, the by is negative 70. Now let's go to C. Our Cx is negative 20. Then our Cy is, we don't know about it, Cy. Yes, have also, we say we have also D. So Dx is negative 60. Then our Dy is negative 70. So it's just a matter of us adding them. So to find, the first question is saying, what are the components? What are the components B and the component C? Then part C, uh, the, the last question is saying what are the magnitude and direction 
which is uh, the angle relative to the post positive direction of the x-axis of the overall displacement. Now to find the x and y, inter uh, y component, the one which are missing in this case, we're going to say ax plus bx plus c x plus dx has to be equal to the resultant which is the x. Okay, so what is ax? ax in this case is 20 plus what is our bx? Our bx is the one we're trying to find. What is our cx? Our cx in this case is negative 20. What is our dx? Our dx in this case is um, our dx is a uh, negative 60. Then the resultant now the x component is 140. So now we're going to say what is 20 plus uh, which is minus we can just put minus 20 again minus 60 so it's negative 60 so we have got it. negative 60 plus bx is equal to negative 140 so i want to um, solve for bx is going to be negative 140 plus 60 so meaning that the bx which is the x component of that one is going to be um we're going to have 140 minus that one we're going to get a negative 80 negative 140 plus 60 is negative 80 meters so that is the, the component of b to find that other one for y now we're going to use the one for y since we want to find the one which is missing which is c so we're going to have our our a y plus b y plus c y plus d y is equal to r y. So a y is sixty plus b y is negative seventy. C y is the one we are trying to find. Then d y is negative seventy. Then the r r y which is the resultant is thirty. So we're going to say 60 minus 70 minus 70, which is going to be um, negative 80. So it's going to be negative 80 plus CY is equal to 30. So CY will be equal to shift this negative 80 to the other side to be 30 plus 80. So in this case, our CY is going to be 30 plus 80 is 110 meters so that is the um the cy now the last question is saying we need to find the mag the magnitude and direction of um, the resultant the resultant we have the x and the y component so it's going to be the resultant the square root of um, rx plus ry so we square them so our resultant in this case is going to be we have negative 140 squared plus 30 squared so our resultant in this case we expect to have 143.2 kilometers what of the direction now before you find the direction first consider the x and y component that's why the question is saying it's supposed to start from positive x axis Okay, relative to the positive view, the direction of x-axis so the x is negative the y is positive we expect our angle to be in second quadrant okay now in second quadrant what do we do 180 minus the theta which we are going to find so we know that the theta is going to be tan inverse the ry divided by rx then this is going to be theta will be equal to we're going to have tan inverse we have our ry to be 30 i'm going to ignore the negative because i'm using this formula if i include the negative then i'm going to say 180 plus theta because this theta is going to be negative okay but no one is going to penalize you even if you ignore the negative so it's going to be 140 so i'll get my theta to be at 12.1 degrees now i have to say 180 i'm going to say 180 minus this okay 
So we are going to have 180 minus 12.1 degrees. So this is going to give me from positive x-axis, this is going to give us 168. It's 167.9, 167.9 degrees, but we can just round it off and say it's going to be, uh, the theta is going to be, which is the direction, is going to be 160. 167.9 so it's going to be 168 degrees from positive x axis so that is it for question 8 number 9 if b is added to c which c is equal to 3.0 i plus 4.0 j the result is uh, the result is a vector in positive in positive direction of the y-axis with the magnitude equal to that of C. What is the magnitude of B? Okay. So they are saying that if C is added to B, so if we say B plus C, this is giving us the magnitude of C. Okay. But they are saying that it's going toward positive y-axis, meaning that the angle is 90 degrees. Now in this case, what we are going to do is um, we are going to have uh, two equations. We know that um, this B, we are going to have um, this B plus C is the same as him. Before we even come here, let's say our B, let's say our vector B is X, I plus Y, J. Meaning that if we add the i alone, we are going to have 3 plus x, then we have got i plus, we are going to have 4 plus y, we have j. Okay? But at the same time, we know that if this is equal to this, then we can put this one to be the resultant to say our b plus c, this one, is going to be the square root of 3 plus i then squared 3 plus x squared which is basically i plus 4 plus y squared which is j now we know that what we have here there is a square and square we can we can just get what is inside so in this case we're going to say the resultant we have been given already okay so to find the resultant, we know that the resultant is the same as that of C. Meaning that to get the resultant is going to be the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared, which is going to give us the resultant is going to be 5. Okay? Now this 5, since we are saying that the angle is 90, meaning that the x, which is the i, in this case is going to be r. Okay? It's going to be Rx, which is R. Rx is the same as Ri. Okay? Ri is going to be R cos theta. Ri is going to be R is 5 cos 90, which is going to give us 0. Then, if we are going to do the same, we're going to say Ri, which is going to be Rj now. So it's going to be R sin theta. Now, in this case, we're going to have j, r is 5, we're going to have sine 90. So, r j is going to be 5. Now, we can see that we have, we can compare this and this, okay? We can compare this and the x component, which is this one, 0. So, we're going to get this, which is inside here, 3 plus x, okay? which is i, is going to be equal to r i. So we're going just to get 3 plus x will be equal to, the answer is 0. In this case, x will be equal to negative 3, meaning we are done with x. Okay? To get the y, what we're going to do is we're going to compare again 4 plus y will be equal to the 5. This now, okay? Meaning that y will be equal to 5 minus 4, y will be equal to 1. Now, our B, remember, our B, we found that B was XI, okay? 
B was XI plus YI. So BX is what? Our X in this case is negative 3, I plus our Y is 1, which is just basically G, uh, I, which is J. Okay? It's going to be, this is J and not I, so it's going to be J. So in this case, this is the magnitude of what? The B. Okay? So, this is going to be what? The B. But if we want to get the magnitude of this B, we know that it's going to be B is going to be equal to negative 3 squared plus negative 1 squared. So what will be our B? In this case, the magnitude of B is going to be um, 3 squared plus 1 squared. Then we get the square root. So the square root of 10, which is going to be 3.2. So we can say that is 3.2. That is going to be the magnitude, but you can even leave your answer here to say B is a, B is a negative 3i minus j. That is just okay. Or you can find this. After finding this, you also get this. Then you're going to get the magnitude to be 3.2. As simple as that. So here is our question. The question is saying in the figure below. A vector A with a magnitude of 17 meters is directed at an angle of 56 degrees counterclockwise from positive x axis. What are the component, that A, AX, and AY of the vector? Then they are saying a second coordinate system is inclined by an angle of 18 degrees with respect to the first one. What are the components x and y in this primed coordinate system? This question is asking us to find the x component and the y component. In this case, what we're going to do is um, we're going to say we have got a, so it's going to be ax, it's going to be a cos theta. Okay, we have been told that this angle, which is 56 degrees, is counterclockwise. So counterclockwise meaning it is coming from positive x axis. And for sure, whenever we're talking about vectors, we are measuring the angles from positive x axis until it touches the vector. Okay? So we're going to use the same angle 56. So we're going to say ax is going to be the vector which we've been given is 17 because the theta is a 56. So the x component in this case is going to be the x component in this case is going to be 17 cos 56 which is 9.5 So 9.5 meters is our x component so I'm going to put it here 9.5 meters is our x component let's let's now go ahead and find the y component so the y component in this case is going to be a y is going to be a sin theta. So a y is going to be what is our a? Our a is 17. We have sin 56. So what is 17 sin 56? So this is giving me 14.09, which is the same as 14.1 meters. So in this case, our y component is 14.1 meters. Now, the second part of this question is saying, a second, uh, a second coordinate system is inclined by, uh, by an angle of 15, 18 degrees with respect to the first one. So as we can see, the second angle is now here. This is the angle they're talking about. But remember, from this point all the way to this vector, it is 18 it is 56 degrees so to get the angle to get this angle only we're going to say the whole angle here is what 56 so we're going to say 56 minus 18 okay meaning that that is going to be the angle which was being inclined there so we are going to see that this is going to give us 56 minus 18 it is 38 
so we're going to have our angles at 8. So this is the angle which we're going to be using. The magnitude is the same, so we're going to say ay, ax now inclined, which is, um, there is a prime, is going to be a prime cos theta. So we're going to have, the, we're going to have 17. Then we have cos 38. So a prime x is going to be 17 cos 17 cos um, 38 is giving me 13 point, 13.396 which is the same as 13.4. So this is my, this is going to be, so we have, uh, we have managed to find one. Let's now go ahead and find the y component. So it's going to be a prime y is going to be a prime sine theta. So we are going to have we are going to have um, a in this case is um, is seventeen. Okay, sine theta eight. So a prime y is going to be seventeen sine. 38 is going to be 10.46, which is the same as 10.5 meters. So these are the X and Y components. So these are the answers for this question. Okay.